Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Smack Connection with the return of the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. Um, circumstances uh, led to me being unable to uh, do the roundup for a few months. Um, it was not as long as I... as It wasn't just all that, it was also just having to catch up on uh, the last few months with the comics. Um, <clears throat> Turns out it's a lot easier to read a, read a week for the comics every week rather than multiple week multiple weeks and months worth of comics in well all multiple months. So, anyways, that said, um, it's it's summertime. And you know what that means? It's time for Summer crossovers. Marvel is currently uh, just about winding down with its uh, summer crossover, Blood Hunt, which we'll be uh, talking more talking more about that uh, later this month. But DC has uh, started its uh, summer crossover just well today with Absolute Power. Absolute Power has been. Uh, Building up for uh, since uh, the Under Dark Crisis, um, with uh, Amanda Waller basically ga gathering power um, again and trying to leverage that, leverage that power against uh, superhumans. Whom she is all, whom she's always thought of as a threat to, well, humanity. Anyways, so we're gonna start off with uh, last week's uh, absolute power ground zero, kind of the prologue. So. Um, we open with uh, Amanda Waller talking with uh, Suicide Squad member Dream or Dreamer, a uh, who is able to with by by dream walking uh, can uh, has has the pre precognitive abilities. So, <clears throat> stage one. Turns out that a, uh, a rogue metahuman is uh, in, on Gamora, the, the island nation of Gamora, which uh, is currently uh, one of Waller's bases. It's um, Jonathan Kent's boyfriend, um, taken out by uh, Suicide Club or Dead Eye, though. Uh, Dreamer attempts to uh, stop the stop his uh, further running, but and does so, and he uh, ends up in uh, the brig of the USS Collins, also having been uh, shot in the foot. Not happy about the fact that Dreamer has uh, is working with Waller, but and so stage two, Time Commander is is uh, brought back from the dead and uh, officially uh, recruited into uh, Task Force X, the the squad. But um, time commander, uh, that time commander's expertise is is somewhat needed on a uh, one of one one of the projects that uh, Waller is utilizing 
uh, early on. Fail safe. The, the robot Batman, robot made built by Batman, uh, Batman is an R, to uh, act as a fail safe should uh, Batman go rogue. Then, uh, he manages, though, to, uh, get failsafe up and running, and basically needs, and water needs into, well, Build six more. Next we have stage three. Um, Waller, failsafe, and uh, some of our, uh, security troops are uh, taking into custody a uh, what appears to be a brainiac. Which Waller raises. As, as her mother, utilizing uh, Justice League's scrap sanctuary technology, and also uh, make, making a point of uh, teaching the Brainiac Queen to uh, ha have a strong dislike for. Uh, Metahumans. This is going. This uh, apparently is a uh, you, you guys you utilize the uh, sanctuary technology. Um, it manages to put put Waller and uh, the girl through uh, twenty years. And that, and what's left to the issue is, uh, well, we've got um, a preview for Absolute Power, one number one. We've got uh, File on Amanda Waller. File on Failsafe. And the whole Brainiac Queen comes from uh, recent uh, Superman Action Comics crossover, um, House of Brainiac. Apparently, though, uh, Brainiac attempted to, well, make a bride of, bride of Brainiac. Yeah. That is first the first thing. Which brings us to absolute power number one. So, issue begins in Metropolis. Um, <clears throat> group of thieves are uh, attempting to escape in a helicopter with uh, presumably money, but uh, their guns are heated, are superheated through heat vision and the rotors of the helicopter are frozen in frost breath. Though, not all their guns are uh, are frozen or heated. And so, one of them shoots Superman. As Superman falls from the sky. 
flashes back to uh, a little more than a day earlier. Animal Man and uh, Animal Girl are uh, in Keystone City. They uh, they've apparently been camping, but um, a group of uh, a mob of uh, of people attack uh, attack the large largely attacking Animal Man. Um, Batman uh, activates the opens the red channel. Anyone within within the sound of any of the superheroes with his, his voice. Uh, there are further uh, videos of showing various uh, various superheroes attacking attacking Earth rather than uh, protecting. Mr. Terrific uh, points out that um, the video of Captain Marvel is fake because he was fighting Gigant at the time. Then a video of uh, Green Lantern and uh, Supergirl goes pops up. Though it's Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan doesn't have his ring. And Supergirl's in space. Wonder Woman and Aquaman, Nightwing. Seem, seem to think it seems that this is really not. This ain't it. This this is something's wrong. Firestorm attacking a hospital. Blue Beetle attacking a city. The Flash, seemingly uh, seemingly Barry, is uh, talking with uh, Hawkman and. Uh, trying to figure out what, what to do, but Hawkman kind of points out that um, you, know, you can't just not, can't really do it Justice League, but can't really make a statement because there's no Justice League. Then uh, video of Superman uh, pops up. Uh, Metropolis of the Daily Planet. Acting Editor-in-Chief editor Lois Lane and uh, her husband Clark Kent are uh, discussing it, and it seems that the uh, among the um, or one of the reporters uh, basically says, "Hey, why aren't we, uh, you know, reporting on this?" And Lois points out that you know they you verify, you don't report, you don't report then verif then verify, you verify then report, and then it turns out that Jimmy Olsen. Uh, discovers that another video on the Daily Planet site. Apparently that um, it's effective immediately um, an outside agent is taking control of uh, the planet servers and all media servers. Sarge Steele, uh, one of Waller's uh, allies, is beginning to ha seemingly have Second thoughts about all this, which he uh, kind of discusses with uh, Failsafe. And so, also, it seems that fa it, Failsafe has uh, continued to be uh, operated. Basically, under the control of Batman Zero and R. But uh, Cyborg's trying to, to deal with uh, the misinformation, as is uh, Oracle, and it seems to be not exactly easy. The uh, the firewalls appear to be active defenses. Which are preventing Cyborg and uh, Oracle from really doing much of anything. Um, some of the members, of the, the some a lot of the 
There's basically moments of uh, heroes are going are basically basically on the defensive. You have JLI in London, Steel and Red Tor and Red Tor Tornado in uh, South Carolina. Then uh, flat kicking back to uh, now. Um, Superboy and uh, Superman, John Kent, find uh, discovered Superman falling from the sky. They try to catch him, but they fall as well, losing their powers. Then Amanda Waller goes public. The JSA get attacked in, the, in New York. Aquaman is Aquaman and the uh, Doom Patrol and Aquaman's allies get uh, attacked in Maine. Things are looking grim. But Batman points out that Waller wouldn't have said anything, wouldn't have uh, shown her face if she didn't think she had already won. She realizes that uh, she thought, or he thought that uh, Waller was playing chess. That he made a massive miscalculation. She's not playing chess. She's rolling tanks. And, uh, the Amazos appear to be taking on <clears throat> or be at the, the heart of uh, the problems with Superman. Um, the Spectre, Dr. Fate, are uh, pulled from, basically removed from their uh, ability, magical abilities. Um, and the Green Arrow is Point states that um, he's on Waller's side. Seems that also that Waller has made a deal with the United Planets. No one leaves Earth. No space cavalry is coming to the rescue. Barricaded the multiverse. Sealed by the time stream and the microverse. They appear to be uh, Green Arrow further set, tells Batman that uh, they, you know, he 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 knows what what Batman's thinking. They figure out if they, they can destroy the Amazos, they'll get their powers back and restored, and you know they can win. But those are the old rules. This is a new design, new technology. The first shots have been fired. The issue ends with John Kent being held prisoner and seemingly being experimented upon. Quite the uh, tale. Moving on, though, to our next book, we've got Batman number 150. This is also an absolute power tie-in, though the, the variant cover doesn't uh, explicitly say, 
say it. And in fact, it's the back of this, the uh, tie-in. So it, at the conclusion of Gotham War, a uh, one of Catwoman's, uh, one of the thieves that Catwoman trained, um, knocked over in a, a cushy apartment building and discovered that it's their back gear in it. So. He's trying to uh, sell the information. But, every, you know, a lot of people are saying, hey, yeah, don't, that, that's, that's not a, a good idea. Goes to see his ex-wife. Turns out that uh, his son's in school and he, try, he uh, ends up they take me of Two Face. Two Face basically saying, "You think you know who, who Batman is? You don't." But uh, he ends up with as part of a crew, a um, bunch of former henchmen. They do a bank robbery. Um, Batman shows up and takes the guy that uh, is trying to leverage his existence, his identity. Wakes up at uh, Gotham University. His son's there. And his son have a, have a heart to heart and uh, he got into, it turns out his son got into henching. Um, and Batman uh, listened and helped him. Told him, be better. Got the guy a scholarship, and then, uh, so, he got to get a scholarship. Bruce Wayne meets with uh, the kid's dad, and they talk. Offers him a fresh start in Metropolis. And that is where the A story ends. Our B story concerns uh, the beginning, the beginnings of uh, the opening salvo, so to speak, of absolute power. Um, turn. Cyborg has discovered that uh, Waller is in possession of a mother box. And the Wonder Woman of Mezo goes after uh, Cyborg and Batman. But, um, and it seems that she's also taken, uh, she's taken Cyborg. Uh, Flash is uh, given an update as to what the uh, what's happened. Cyborg has been taken, and uh, you know they need Cyborg. Superman's working on a plan. Always well, got a mother box. Why not steal the mother box? After all, you might know uh, you might know a, a very good thief. And that is where the issue ends, which will bring us to our Image Comics offerings for the week, <clears throat> starting with Scarlet number two, for, with uh, Cobra Commander and, and Duke. Um, Codename G.I. Joe has started uh, getting, getting itself together. Um, also, Cobra has begun uh, making, making moves to uh, become a major player. Um, Cobra Commander already recruited uh, the weapons of, uh, of Destro. We'll talk more about uh, Destro next week, week after, but, uh, Scarlet, um, currently her mission is, uh, 
to infiltrate the uh, Arashkagi compound, which she's managed to do as of uh, the first issue, and uh, find Operative Jinx, who's been MIA for quite some time. Currently, she's in the she uh, lists uh, four mission objectives. Objective one: gain access to the Arashkagi stronghold in, in Japan. Objective 2. Re-establish contact with missing embedded agent Jinx. Objective 3. Find an impossible secure rumored out of Chicago weapon. Objective 4. Stay alive. She added that one herself, but it seems key. But she's currently a prisoner in the Chicago compound. They, uh, it seems that the lineages managed to, uh, get rid of the uh, found the lockpick she had in her, in her in her mouth, but did its job. It was found. She has also managed to embed a uh, razor blade in her stomach, which she uh, which she uh, takes it out and uh, gets herself free. Fights uh, some of uh, the Chicago, and apparently is uh, and is found by Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow uh, shows her around the uh, compound, and and uh, they see Jinx. We get some flashbacks to. Uh, Jinx and uh, Scarlet's time uh, together, but uh, apparently Scarlet has impressed Storm Shadow twice so far. She meets with Hardmaster, who gives her a mission to prove herself, stealing a, uh, a weapon. It's, uh, which has fallen under Yakuza control. And so, she, she's, uh, makes her way towards the weapon. But she's been, uh, discovered. But that is where the issue ends. scroll has been a good series so far. I mean, two issues in, but I think it's a, it's probably likely a five-issue miniseries. So, yeah. Moving on, though, to our last poem for the moment, we've got Free Agents, number one. So this, this Free Agents is a book that's uh, from Image. It's a, um, it's written by uh, Kirby Saik and uh, Fabian Nesaiza. Um They've been, Nesaiza especially has been uh, talking about it quite a bit on uh, Twitter. And, well, you know, figured me, since it was, uh, it was in my box at uh, the shop. May as well pick it up. So we've got uh, a group of extra, extra dimensional soldiers um, who are stuck on Earth. And they figure out, well, you know, may as well be, be good guys still. So, But they've also created civilian identities, and they are trying to, some of them are, are very, are, some of the members are making, are finding it easier to uh, adapt to being civilians. Some aren't. But we're the uh, the members of the team we've got uh, Pike, Salvo, Katari, Chalice, Shakti, Ridge, and, and Maraud. But uh, Chalice, going by the name Alice, is uh, attending school. Um, I 
members are basically trying to are basically just you know it's an introduction but also it's in the middle of it's after the you know their uh Basically, what their life basically was. Um, is that they're uh, yeah. it's supposed to be a, a debrief? Um, <coughs> excuse me. And apparently, yeah, after that, after the, it, the the news reports of the, uh, showing them uh, saving. Uh, you know, saving you know, the city are are also of concern. It's also pointed out that uh, it's also pointed pointed out clearly that their leader isn't isn't is is dead after the war they fought with. Uh, Leave Salvo. Salvo being currently being the leader, but um, <clears throat> that night uh, they all have uh, linked dreams, reliving the end of their war, of uh, the war. And it turns out that. Uh, Barrage, their uh, their leader. Well, he might not actually be dead. Seemingly, seems he may have survived the destruction of uh, their universe. As he shows up uh, on their doorstep, stating that uh, the free agents' fight will never end. That is where the issue ends. Interesting concept. Uh, great creative team. Honestly, great creative team. Uh, I'm, 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 in, I'm in on this. Anyways, that's going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, uh, Mastodon, uh, Instagram, and Blue Sky, as well as my Patreon and my PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.